Hi, Assalamu Alaikum and good morning everyone. Thank you for visiting my channel again. Abdul Rahim here with you. So we are done with the imaging chapter now. We will move on to our um, uh, theory lessons. And today we are, I'm going to explain you what techniques we use in echocardiography. Um, you know, um, I will just give you the main ideas about the techniques. I will not go into the deep physics, but if you want me to give you or explain you about the physics as well, I can make a separate vlog for that one. Okay, but um, I will suggest that yeah, like you can get it once you are doing there, you can learn this one from your books and these things. Uh, I'll just give you the hints that what are the important techniques and why we use them. Okay, so the important techniques are 2D echocardiography and M mode echocardiography, then we use the Doppler echocardiography. In Doppler echocardiography, we use color Doppler, we use pulse wave, continuous wave Doppler, and then the tissue Doppler as well. So um, uh, I will explain you these all things later on, but today I'll just give you the hints how we are going, to, how and why we are going to use them. So two dimensional is like um, once you, uh, whenever you are going to put the probe on the patient chest, you get an image. That is a two-dimensional image. Why we call it two dimensions? Because we are seeing this image from the two dimension. One is the width and the other one is the length. That's why we are uh, we are getting uh, the image from the two dimensions. That's why we call it two-dimensional echocardiography, okay? So you can use it just to see the anatomy of the heart, the structure, okay? And then you can do different measurements in 2D. You can freeze the image and then measure the size of the chamber so you can uh, you know you can look at the ivc collapsibility you can look at the aortic size so these all things or you can look at the um, septum if there is a hole in the septum so you can see it in the 2d so this is what the 2d is the, the next technique comes in the m mode so m mode is uh, we call it motion modulation mode m mode gives you a time gated motion of underlying objects so you use a cursor in M mode. Once you put the cursor down, whatever object is coming under the cursor, it will give you the time gated motion of that particular object. Okay. For example, you put a cursor on the mitral valve. Okay. It will give you the mitral motion. If you put it on the aortic valve, it will give you a time gated motion of the aortic valve. So you can see, okay, the aortic valve opens here and the aortic valve closes here. Okay. So this is what you can use in M mode. Then it comes, uh, then the next um, technique is color Doppler. Color Doppler is also just uh, a form of Doppler. Uh, we use it and uh, we, we use mainly two colors, red color and blue color. And uh, we use a convention we call BART convention. So color Doppler helps us to determine the blood flow, its direction. Okay, and if there is any abnormal flow. So as I told you, we use BART convention. BART means blue away, red towards. So we are using two colors. Blue is going away from our probe. Okay, and then the red is coming towards the probe. Okay, so red towards and blue away. So this is the um, uh, main principle of the color Doppler. So these two colors we see. And whenever there is a problem, for example, a regurgitation or leakage of the valve, or there is an obstruction of the flow, then we see the mosaic pattern, okay? Hi, Assalamu Alaikum and good morning everyone. Thank you for visiting my channel again. Abdul Rahim here with you. So we are done with the imaging chapter now. We will move on to our um, uh, theory lessons. And today we are, I'm going to explain you what techniques we use in echocardiography. Um, you know, um, I will just give you the main ideas about the techniques. I will not go into the deep physics, but if you want me to give you or explain you about the physics as well, I can make a separate vlog for that one. Okay. But um, I will suggest that yeah, like you can get it once you are doing there, you can learn this one from your books and these things. Uh, I'll just give you the hints that what are the important techniques and why we use them. Okay. So the important techniques are 2D echocardiography and M mode echocardiography. Then we use the Doppler echocardiography. In Doppler echocardiography, we use color Doppler, we use pulse wave, continuous wave Doppler, and then the tissue Doppler as well. So um, uh, I will explain you these all things later on, but today I'll just give you the hints how we are going to how and why we are going to use them. So 
two dimensional is like um, once you uh, whenever you are going to put the probe on the patient chest you get an image that is a two dimensional image why we call it two dimensions because we are seeing this image from the two dimension one is the width and the other one is the length that's why we are uh, we are getting uh, the image from the two dimensions that's why we call it two dimensional echocardiography okay so you can use it just to see the anatomy of the heart the structure okay and then you can do different measurements in 2d you can freeze the image and then measure the size of the chamber so you can uh, you know you can look at the ivc collapsibility you can look at the aortic size so these all things or you can look at the um, septum if there is a hole in the septum so you can see it in the 2d so this is what the 2d is the, the next technique comes in the m mode so m mode is uh, we call it motion modulation mode M mode gives you a time gated motion of underlying objects so you use a cursor in M mode once you put the cursor down whatever object is coming under the cursor it will give you the time gated motion of that particular object okay for example you put a cursor on the mitral valve okay it will give you the mitral motion if you put it on the aortic valve it will give you a time gated motion of the aortic valve so you can see okay the aortic valve opens here and the aortic valve closes here okay so this is what you can use in M mode. Then it comes. Uh, then the next um, technique is color Doppler. Color Doppler is also just uh, a form of Doppler. Uh, we use it, and uh, we we use mainly two colors: red color and blue color. And uh, we use a convention we call Bart convention. So color Doppler helps us to determine the blood flow, its direction okay and if there is any abnormal flow so as i told you we use bart convention bart means blue away red towards so we are using two colors blue is going away from our probe okay and then the red is coming towards the probe okay so red towards and blue away so this is the um, uh, main principle of the color doppler so these two colors we see and whenever there is a problem for example a regurgitation or leakage of the valve or there is an obstruction of the flow then we see the mosaic pattern okay so i'll give you a hint about the color doppler color doppler uh, you know uh, whenever you see any disturbance about the color or any abnormality in the color there will be a mosaic pattern as i told you so that mosaic pattern will have one dominant flow one dominant color okay for example if there is a problem with the flow coming towards us then that mosaic pattern will be dominantly red flow okay and then but the pattern will be do, uh, uh, mosaic pattern okay but you will see more of a reddish pattern and then the same thing if it the problem is with the uh, flow going away from us it will be a bluish type of pattern but mainly it will be mosaic pattern so uh, this was the hint and also the color Doppler helps us to determine if there is any flow disturbance, if there is, for example, any leakage, any stenosis, so you can determine in the color. Then that comes into the Doppler. We use mainly two Dopplers. One is the continuous wave Doppler and one is the pulse wave Doppler. Why we use Doppler? You know, Doppler, we use it to get the um, direction and the velocity of the flow, blood flow, okay? Because in, uh, in um, 2D echocardiography, we can't see the blood flow okay or we can't detect the velocity of the blood flow in color flow we can see the flow but we can't detect the velocity of the flow we use the doppler to detect the velocity and now we have two types of doppler one is the pulse wave doppler one is the continuous wave doppler so uh, they have their own limitations so first i'll talk about the pulse wave doppler first wave, pulse wave doppler um, we use it when we when we need the velocity of a precise area okay and when we are targeting the lower blood velocities we use the pulse wave doppler because it gives us the velocity of the same area where you put the cursor in usually the pulse wave doppler cursor is with uh, is equal to mark so wherever that mark is you will get the highest velocity uh, you will get the velocity of that area okay now uh, and uh, by the way we are using two crystals in uh, pulse wave doppler one uh, one crystal we are sorry sorry i mixed it up so we are using one crystal in pulse wave doppler that crystal is using as a uh, is working as a sender and receiver so it sends a pulse wave okay and then it um, waits for it once it comes back and it receives it 
so we that's why we call it pulse wave doppler then the continuous wave doppler continuous wave doppler is continuously sending and continuously receiving the sound waves okay that's why we can detect the high velocities using the color flow uh, using the continuous wave doppler okay pulse wave doppler we can't detect the highest velocity because of the nyquist limit nyquist limit is um, is the highest limit which we can achieve by the pulse wave doppler is called nyquist limit and when over velocities are increasing the nyquist limit then we call it aliasing okay so uh, these are these two words why i use these two main things about the physics because they usually come into the exam so aliasing what is the aliasing when your um, velocity exceeds the nyquist limit then aliasing occurs what is the nyquist limit nyquist limit is the maximum velocity which we can measure using the pulse wave doppler okay so uh, in pulse wave doppler we can't measure the highest velocities okay so whenever we want to get the highest velocity we we need to use the continuous wave doppler but what is the limitation of the continuous wave doppler that in continuous wave doppler you put the cursor you know you use the cursor a line comes in with a uh, with a mark of diamond there okay so you put the cursor there it will give you the highest velocity all through the cursor so you can't um, detect that where this velocity is actually happening okay so i'll show you the, in the pictures as well but just to give you an idea like you can't detect where this velocity is so to detect the specific area velocity you will use the pulse wave doppler especially the low velocities you will use the pulse wave doppler and for the higher velocities you will use the continuous wave doppler but it will not determine where this velocity is actually happening so these are the main techniques you use in uh, uh, echocardiography now we will move on and we will do the you know different measurements and uh, also we will go on to read the cardiac cycle to start our theory lessons thank you very much please keep subscribing and share it with others i need your support to keep, to carry on thank you very much bye bye take care